Hi there, my name is Summer and we are on our second episode of What is Creativity? So the next lesson I learned, <laughs> I've learned this over maybe a few years now. So let's assume that I'm in the creative awareness. I know that I can make great things and I'm starting to grow in confidence. Um, but one of the reasons I'm making this, this whole series is because I had a whole lot of hiccups along the way. Um, of course, the best way to learn is by doing, but I wanted to share how like I had to make some major pauses in my creativity because I felt like um, either I was like, oh, this isn't going to work out or I was like, I don't know where how to move forward. Um, and so I want to share some tips I've used to move forward and some mindsets I've taken up. Um, to help build a goal. And I wanna take you to my marketing class. So if you've never taken marketing, I highly suggest it. It should accompany any time management class because it is literally about carrying out a set of steps from beginning to end. It teaches you how to identify your problem, your mission, do your research, and understand how to get to the end. And I realized that that's, that's what marketers do. Um, and then I realized in the way my teacher explained it, he's a great teacher, but he was just like, this doesn't just have to apply to business. This could apply to anything. Say you wanna apply for a loan, say you wanna to apply to a new school or to a job, everything is marketing. And really it's about identifying who who is your target audience. Like, so if I'm auditioning for, or if I'm trying out, no. If I'm interviewing for a job, you want to understand who's going to be interviewing you. Who do you want to want you? Now, it's not necessarily about like tricking them into getting who you are, but it's it's about making yourself and letting them know that they that you are what they'd want. And I know like for me, when I first heard marketing, I'm like, these are just people who are trying to persuade people and they're tricking people into, into buying things. But what I realized is there is a way, there is such thing as making yourself desirable by the person you want to desire you. <laughs> and and a, lot of, a lot of what helps connect that dot is um, research. You have to say, what do they actually like? And you even have to say, am I actually a good fit for this person? So it's not morphing who you are, but it's saying, um, it's like a business is saying, you know what? I, I, make, I make logs and in my head, I feel like um, firemen would really want logs. Well, you have to see, does that actually work? Do firemen actually want logs just because they're firemen? No, they actually fight fires. They don't have any need for logs, but carpenters, hmm. Carpenters, they use wood all the time. Maybe they might want to uh, get some original wood from my forest and I can send it to them. And so now your job is to say, okay, carpenters, where are carpenters and what do they do? Where can I find them so I can let them know about what I do? So I'm just saying like a lot of the marketing process is about saying, how can I find the people who would need what I do? Because what I realize is we're, we're, our world is becoming smaller. We are building bridges into different countries. Businesses are expanding globally. Um, and we have to, we, I feel like a lot of people who are entrepreneurs, they have great ideas, but in their local area, nobody really needs that great idea. But the great part of the internet or travel is that you can find people who specifically want what you have. And so this is where I connect it back to this part of creativity and bringing an idea to life. Often I got, I, my hiccup was, well, nobody wants what I have. I don't have a lot of followers. I don't have money. I'm not making full income and and I, I don't, I'm not super confident in, in my craft right now. 
but know that just because people aren't like saying oh my gosh i really want what you have i will pay you hundreds of dollars for it that isn't the tell tell all sign that like you should be doing something sometimes you just have to sift through and do your research and say who would actually want what i have and how can i bring it to them and how can i find it so that they can find a benefit what i do naturally beneficial because this leads to a, a theory i have i really do believe god when we when we have ideas that's god giving us things that the world actually needs so i have a desire to create music and bring people together well i know that my desire was to build bridges between people um i feel like we live in a very antisocial community where i live in and and i find that it's hurting us now it's like and what i'm realizing is people are great but they're scared to talk and they're scared to interact and i said oh i would love to use music to help bring people together and not be scared and not be stuck to themselves because the pattern and that cycle continues is the more you isolate yourself the less you have help and the things you need from other people and so i know that when i create these spaces people will meet and they'll help connect gaps they'll help um, each other and they'll help create their own new idea so that was my own personal idea as a musician but I definitely got stuck I was like oh my gosh how can I actually make concerts at the time I didn't know anybody um, but what I had to do was I had to take the necessary steps I knew I needed to take one of those first steps was get to know my community I did that through school I did that through church I did that through babysitting and now as a young adult um, after college, like I came back to my hometown, I was able to like actually get to know people. And now I was like, ooh, I really wanna, if I'm making music, I wanna have a live music. Well, I joined some clubs. Um, I got to know some musicians at my church. And now I actually have people who I could say, hey, could you drum for my concert? Could you do guitar? Could you be a background singer? So like, I'm realizing, oh, it's actually happening. Is, does any of this cost money? No, but it does cost putting yourself out there and saying hello. And so once again, this is why I'm such a proponent for networking and having gatherings because this is where stuff actually happens. And what I find is we're in a very prosperous country, but the way we interact and the way we think about ourselves and our negativity is very anti-prosperous. And so I really want to switch gears so that we move in healthy uh, directions and mindsets. Um, and just to continue how I've like grown that idea is, so I got to know my community, got to know musicians, I got to know some business owners. So now I have like at least three different places where I know I could ask owners like, hey, if I wanted to do a concert here, could I? And they're like, and I know that they would be willing, they'd be able to consider it. So. Another thing I did is I learned how to produce on my own. And what I started doing was I started making demos of my songs. Um, and I knew that though these aren't like, it's not likely that I'm gonna give a guitar player this song and I'll say, okay, now play it. Um, but I do have like a blueprint to work with. So I'm making these great songs and then I'm like, okay, now I'm gonna transfer it into sheet music or into charts guitar chord charts you know like I was like now I can actually put it into sheet music and now I can help that can help me distribute the music to these musicians so as I talk about this this is actually very healthy for me because I too can get very discouraged um but if I look back on all all these steps I took like I still like well I'll give you a hint I'll give you a side note is I got in contact with one local musician and she was like, would you want to put on a concert together? So that that idea is actually starting to happen. It's a it'll be a little baby concert, but I'll have people and I'll have a venue and I'll have somebody who I can lean on who can help me. So like that dream is actually coming to life this summer within the next couple months. So I I, I hope to just be an example of somebody who's building things from scratch but into something greater and is holding tight to what that vision was holding tight to what that imagination was 
um and before we ever got to do live concerts i was doing some online concerts and learning how to talk to people even though it's online and i can't see anybody so um progress was still being made and um once again i just want to encourage you to hold tight to what you see because you can build it um and what i learned from this marketing class is if i could do it all over again i would kind of make a sturdier chain a sturdier plan you know and say okay i'm gonna do my research and my next goal is to do this and have this as the outcome once it's done i throw that away and i make a new one and i say okay what's my next goal this is my mission this is how i can do it um this is my my blueprint this is how i execute it once it's done we throw it away go to the next thing so what i would do now is just have a better method and confidence in knowing that these things can be accomplished um it will just take time and research and moments building and i think when we do that as creators we help we help ourselves not lose hope because really we are we are playing with time we have such a privilege to manipulate time as humans because what I did was I had a goal that started seven years ago, but seven years later, I'm actually building it. But I held on to that idea the whole time. Now, as, as all those seven years passed, I definitely forgot what my goal was. But if I always had a book or some type of chart I always went back to, I wouldn't necessarily be as um, doubtful of myself or I wouldn't waver so much. So that's just a tip that I think could really help you is to have a plan um, as you're executing your dream, um, to hold tight to what your your vision is and to also reward yourself. Um, man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. I am lacking in doing this and I could do better at this. And I've just kind of started to see the light at the end of the tunnel because I got lost in the um, in the the whirlwind of not having many other people who knew my goal not having a lot of people who really supported my goal um and prior everything i did i always was connected to other people i always had other people to root, root me on or like push me forward but this was my own project and um the thing is, is I got into a habit of once I finished a goal, I didn't even reflect on what I did and I threw it I threw away the I, I just moved on to the next thing. I didn't um, I didn't reward myself. I didn't say good job summer. I know that you have a small voice saying in your head saying you can't. I know that the odds are against you. I know that you've never seen anybody else do this and you don't actually have a blueprint how to carry this out, but you're doing it on your own. Good job, Summer. And that's those are a few sets of words that I could say to myself and I should say to myself every day because this is where life can get very dark and this is where life can get very confusing because you don't have anybody telling you you're going in the right direction and you don't have anybody cheering you on but i just encourage you as you're creating your your creative space as you're carrying out your goals please reward yourself because there's still that little three-year-old that five-year-old inside of you who loves getting ice cream who loves playing in a playground who recognizes the reward of a smile of a hug of social interaction and um, my creative space started to die because I wasn't connected to anybody else I wasn't sharing my goal and I wasn't getting help from anybody else to do it and what I found now is okay I've made the blueprint for what I want but how can I actually make it happen to actually make a concert happen that requires business so I said okay I'm gonna start taking business classes to actually make a, a 
help me actually make the music, I need to get better in software. So I started working with music software and I started going and I went to music school for a bit. Um, and so as I close this video, I just hope you know that this is the beautiful artwork of life. This is what makes life fun. It also makes it frustrating, but I hope that you throw away the frustration and that you switch to optimism and hope and confidence in yourself because every step you take is a good step. Every step in that direction you want to go into is a good step, no matter how small. And what will be beautiful is at the end, you'll be like, wow, it's all here. But it'll only be maybe in one one moment of, of, of cheering. But cheer for yourself now along on the journey. Make a plan for yourself. Um, make a safe environment for you to succeed, for you to um, check back on your past self and confirm how the future lines up with the past and, and have fun, you know. Um, create a space of grace and forgiveness for yourself as you're creating. Um, that's the only way creativity can really happen. And um, in this next episode, I want to talk a little bit about creativity and money. Um, and there is a war on with both of those things. How can I be creative and how can I make money? And I'll leave with this kind of transitionary point. Um, for a while, I stopped creating because I didn't feel like I had enough money to make it. Or I felt like, well, I'm supposed to be moving out because my gap year extended beyond a year. And, but I was still confused with where, what direction I wanted to go in. And for a moment, I was considering maybe I should try doing this independent musician thing, grow on, grow from the ground up by myself. And I made some growth, but the growth I needed needed to be financially related, which is forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, so I can afford a place to live, so I can pay for the bills to make the music. And right now I'm at home. And I started to feel ashamed. I was like, I can't make music until I actually have my own money to enjoy that craft. Even though I want to do music the rest of my life, maybe it just has to be a hobby. But this is the sad part. I don't think my, my, dreams, are, my dreams are too big to be part-time. <laughs> That's what I'll say. My dreams are too big. And I can tell that I want to put a lot of work in it. And it can be hard finding out how to make um, your dream manifest in our economy. Because, hey, if you want to hire people to work for you, well, you got to have money to pay them. And maybe I might have a whole group of people who just want to volunteer and help. I, I could see that happening. But there are some things we need. Our, our, our system operates on money. And so... I just want to help you not be discouraged um, when you don't see the money right away. Don't just throw your idea away. Don't assume that you can't do it. Um, and we're going to talk about that in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.